Today on Questions Answered, we're talking about bicycle frame materials. And the one overarching question that's going to lead this whole conversation is, what are the different frame materials and what are the benefits and the drawbacks of each of them? So let's go through them. The first one is steel. And steel is one of the oldest used bicycle frame materials and the most common. For good reason too, it's inexpensive, it's easy to form, and it provides a strong and comfortable riding bike. In fact, some of the best riding frames out there are considered to be steel frames. But there's a couple different versions of steel, and there's high tensile steel, which is a cheaper, low carbon steel that's very easy to work with and very common. Um, and then there is chromoly steel, which is a more expensive uh, alloy that uses chromium and molybdenum to make it so that the tubing can be extruded into a thinner wall and butted to make a lighter frame. Our brilliant line of bikes are all steel, and you'll find higher end chromoly steel in our L-Train frame. Steel has a long fatigue life, so steel frames aren't known to crack or break, even with thousands and thousands of miles on them, but they are known to rust, especially in wet and corrosive environments. And that's why aluminum might be a better choice if you live in a highly corrosive environment. Aluminum is basically the second most common frame material, and it has some big advantages over steel. There's a few different common alloys that make up aluminum bicycle frames. The first one is 6061 aluminum, and that is made up of uh, aluminum, magnesium, and silicon. That has a great strength and weight ratio, has great corrosion resistance, and it uh, is pretty easy to work with. It's easy to weld, easy to reform after welding. Um, but it does require a full heat treatment after the frame is fully welded. So it's a little bit more energy intensive compared to something like steel. Then there's also 7005 series aluminum, which is aluminum and zinc. And that is a much stiffer frame material. Um, it has higher strength and better fatigue resistance than 6061 aluminum, but it's more difficult to work with because of that stiffness. Um, although it doesn't require a full heat treatment process after the fact. Um, so what everybody says about aluminum in terms of its ride quality is it's very stiff feeling, which means the bike can be really responsive. It can also be uh, very strong and respond well in a performance riding scenario, uh, but it can also be uh, relatively harsh in terms of its ride feel. But a lot of that stuff can be mitigated by using, let's say, a carbon fork or wider tires. A big advantage of aluminum frames in general over steel frames is that they can be formed in all kinds of different shapes. Not only can they be butted, like chromoly steel frames, to be lighter, but they can also be hydroformed uh, and shaped into more angular shapes, different curve shapes, um, to really change the strength and the flex characteristics of a frame to suit a particular application or ride feel, and to change the aesthetics. If you look at a bike like the Priority 600 HXT, that's more of a performance-oriented hardtail, you can see it uses some formed tubing to have a stronger, stiffer down tube. Another advantage of an aluminum frame is that it's way more corrosion resistant compared to a steel frame, which means it's a great fit for wet or corrosive environments. But there is a downside in that it has a shorter fatigue life. That being said, we have frames out there with 20, 30,000 miles on them with no sign of fatigue or, or cracking or anything like that. So it's still a pretty long fatigue life. If you're looking for a frame with the longest fatigue life and great corrosion resistance, look at titanium. Titanium bicycle frames are made of an alloy that includes a small percentage of aluminum and vanadium. And many say that titanium offers the ride quality of steel, but with the weight benefits of aluminum. But it is very expensive and that's because titanium is very energy intensive to smelt. And it's also a pretty challenging material to form into tubing and to weld. It can only be welded in a completely inert environment because it's highly reactive under heat. The other thing about titanium frames is that they can't be easily reformed after they've been welded. If you look at a steel frame or an aluminum frame, they can basically be adjusted manually after they've been welded to make up for any issues with uh, tolerance. But with a titanium frame, it basically is the shape that it is when it's done being welded. So it has to be welded very precisely. And if the frames aren't welded precisely, then they're rejects. And so that's why it uh, ends up being a pretty high cost to produce a titanium frame. Rounding out the options for metal bike frames, magnesium is another material that's sort of been on the fringe, but is making its way into being a slightly more popular choice for certain applications. 
Magnesium can be welded in tubing form to make a frame that rides and looks a lot like an aluminum frame. Magnesium can also be cast, and that's becoming increasingly more common for e-bikes where weight isn't as important as low manufacturing cost and cool fancy looking frame shapes. What's now considered the most common high-end frame material is carbon fiber. And carbon fiber frames are basically made of a graphite fiber cloth that are layered in high strength epoxy resin. And they're made through a fairly expensive layup and molding process where the molds are usually machined out of aluminum and the frames are baked in those uh, at fairly high temperatures. Each size requires a specific mold. And since graphite fibers are only strong in a pulling direction, that means they have to be meticulously laid up in order for a frame to be strong uh, in every direction. The biggest advantage of carbon frames is that they're highly tunable in terms of weight and strength because of the way that the material can be laid up in different shapes and in different densities to provide various characteristics. Modern carbon frames have a longer fatigue life compared to metal frames, but they are susceptible to impacts. So crashes, directional impacts uh, can damage carbon frames, sometimes in ways that aren't necessarily visible. The most common frames that are made out of carbon fiber are high performance road, gravel, and mountain bike frames, where a higher cost is acceptable because of the higher performance benefits. Carbon frames can also be repaired, which is something that's interesting compared to, let's say, aluminum frames. Aluminum frames, typically you wouldn't repair them because if you if they, they can be welded back together, let's say if they break or crack, but they would have to be heat treated again. And the amount of work and, and cost that goes into having to do that is pretty substantial. Carbon fiber frames can be repaired, usually by patching uh, carbon fabric and epoxy onto whatever area of the frame needs attention. But that can also be pretty expensive and not necessarily 100% reliable. If you compare that to steel though, steel frames can easily be welded back together and don't need any heat trim. Another interesting yet fringe frame material is bamboo. Bicycles can be made out of bamboo and it's cool because bamboo tubing is very light and very strong. They're usually heat treatment bamboo tubes that are bound together using fibers like hemp or fiber class dipped in epoxy. It's a cool and sustainable option that offers a relatively lightweight and smooth riding frame but there are inconsistencies in strength, weight, and performance, and that's just because it's a natural material. Um, and it's a fairly intensive construction process, so it means that they can be pretty expensive to make, despite being a natural frame material, and the joints are vulnerable to wear over time. So it's a really cool and interesting frame material, just not one that we really see too common in uh, mass production. There's a few other niche materials out there, some makers are making frames out of wood. And if you go way back, that is the original frame material, right? But, uh, you know, it makes for a really cool looking frame and a really interesting story. But, you know, uh, they're a little heavier. They're a lot more expensive compared to some other manufacturing methods. So if it's your thing, go for it. Uh, similarly, uh, flax has been used, flax plant fibers, in place of carbon fibers to make a composite frame that offers some of the weight and ride quality benefits of carbon fiber, but from a natural source. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, there's a few other companies out there looking at making frames out of recycled plastic. And that's just a really cool sustainable approach and a different way to do it. Can't really speak to the ride quality or performance of those because they just haven't been around that long. So there's a brief overview of the different frame materials out there and what the pros and cons are. But as you're doing your research for your own bike, Check out the different materials and think about what is gonna work best for your application. But if you have any questions about frame materials or anything else bike related, post it in the comments and we'll address it in a future video. Thanks for watching.